Go back to the process, go grip, aim, which we went through in great detail. How you set the club down in the proper posture. Now, I think this is really interesting because if you look at some players on tour, you know, they're much more like this, right? And then you take Fleetwood, right? Mm -hmm. Who's very round, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you, if you look at Fleetwood on a tee, this is his natural posture. Mm -hmm. He's not like he's standing like this and then going into the golf ball like that. This is his natural posture, right? And so again, I'm such a big believer in natural because natural is tension free. And so like your shoulders are a little more forward than mine. I'm gonna walk right. in, I wanna say this about posture. Two things control how far you stand for the ball, your connection point, your balance point. I'll see a lot of amateurs walk in and they go, they unplug. Exactly. Right? And so I'll say plug in, just to pretend that you have electric plugs at the top of your biceps and you have wall sockets on your rib cage. And I go. literally, before you set the club down, I want you to plug in. So if you plug in, just maintain that. If you drop the club to the butt of your, butt of your club to your belt buckle and step in and stay plugged in as you set the club down, I don't care if you've got a driver. I show people all this all the time. You got Ernie Ellis hitting a driver and then Ernie Ellis hitting an iron or Tiger Woods. There's, it's almost the exact same plug in, right? Just maybe a little more out with a driver, but not much. But bottom line is they're not disconnecting. You see amateurs all the time walk in and they go like this, right? And so your distance from the golf ball is gonna be off. I, I define it as, okay, here's the midpoint. Here's the seam on my shirt, the right side of my body, the trail side. I wanna see that same point that Todd connected. Where I'm plugging in is the midpoint right there between those two. Okay, we, do, we were having our players grip exactly where they would with that right hand, point at the belt buckle, and just letting that get to the ground. And as soon as they were there, you know, leaving your upper body where it is, and of course, you know, taking your grip, it's, it can relax a little bit and doesn't have to be anchored to my body. But notice when I do that, well, it just looks like it's just there the whole time. And that's me setting up exactly how I would. Okay, exactly. one, one and thing that's, yeah. And I'll point out, your plug-in is really, it's up here. It's not your, it is. It's not jammed in, it's plugged in. And you see, what is the most com one of the most common things you see on tours, guys still, and they even play sometimes, you see them kind of push that, Always, that yeah. shirt sleeve up or put a glove under there when they're practicing. Why? They're just trying to make sure that they're plugged in. And the glove, by the way, isn't at the elbow, right? It's at the armpit, right? That's the plug in. So what I love about when you were back here and you were sighting the club, the other thing you were doing because you were standing up with the club in front of you is your body was in a better posture. It's in its natural posture mm -hmm. so that when you focus down on the golf ball and you finally take a step and turn to the side and then, ro and then turn, this is the big point. The big point is the way you got the club on the ground from this position, I always say let the club where the grip drops down until it's at your belt, and now just bend from the hips until it hits the ground, right? And so if you do that, if you kind of create your natural posture right here, right? Like I like to pull my shoulders back a little bit after my rotator cuff surgery, so I kind of protect them a little bit. But when you bend from the hip joint, it creates your natural posture. And you know, like I said, Fleetwood's gonna look rounder than some players on tour that are sharper. So that's correct for those players. The key is they're bending from the hip joint. Todd, do that again. See how he's really hip joint in line with ankle there. You notice how there's no sit back here. Yeah. Because he's stepping over the balls of his feet, you know, he's really getting everything over the golf ball. And some simple, you know, I always say some, I always say some simple human being terms, right? You know, if you had a T stuck to your sternum, right? We're just kind of pointing that more down towards the golf ball. Yeah. And doing that from the waist, like you're bowing from the waist, not doing that with simply just, I call it the old man posture, right? Where you get people sitting back, their bottom vertebrae is vertical, and then they tilt from here. That's right. Okay. Rounded, yeah. Notice how he's doing that. He's very straight legged at first, rolling right over into the ball of his foot. He's leaving that point at his belt buckle, letting the club hit the ground with the forward tilt, and then building the posture for there, keeping the weight up in the front of his feet. Yeah, plug in. So that's, that's crucial. And guys, I mean, this is important to understand. Todd, just, you know, not to jump ahead, but I'm just gonna talk about something. You guys understand that we build connection from the ground up. Three components of connection at Porzak Golf that we always talk about, okay? We talk about club in front of hands, hands in front of body, and where the pressure in your feet is at the given times the club and the hands are in those spots. So when I have somebody set up correctly, starting with the hip joint over the ankle, okay? You can see I have 50% of my weight here, 50% of my weight there. Hips right over the ankle. If I were to tilt forward, I'm 100% on this side right now. When I flex my knees, I'm flexing downward, keeping my hip joint over my ankle, not sitting back on the bar stool. Now what that does is it gives me now a 70-30 feeling that helps me build connection from the ground up. So many players start back here 
and then either over rotate their body too soon because the weight's already back in the heels by the time the golf club's only halfway back and then they're lifting their arms up the rest of the way and that's not the bow and arrow being pulled back to maximum tension at the top of the swing. I thought this was a, so, good, a good visual for us to look at because this is two guys who do a great job of everything that Todd and I are looking for you guys to do. It looks as if Cam has a little bit straighter legs, looks as if Adam Scott's flexed a little bit more, but one thing I want our players to see and I want all the viewers to see, look at the hip joint to ankle, remain the same. Look at the shoulders past the toes. But I wanted you guys to see the lower body and how that works. That's Adam Scott flexing more, but still maintaining the hip joint where it is. And all I'm trying to show you guys there, that I see this, this is the most common thing I see. Somebody flexes to engage, and they flex sitting back. And that is just a recipe for everything swinging around their body, for their hip opening too soon and opening the door for an inside takeaway. And then everything, as Todd would say, then has to be manipulated from that point on in order to get back into the correct spot. So when we start off straight, 50% here, 50% there, keep the hip joint over the ankle, bend over the belt line, flex down, okay? The big checkpoints that we've created for our players when they draw two lines is seeing that hip joint stay over the ankle seeing and memorizing if they hang their hands down. I love this, Todd. I use this not only in putting, but in the swing too. Hanging the hands down. Todd gave me this checkpoint when I was younger to check the train track of my golf swing, which are my shoulders, not my feet, okay? The shoulders are gonna be the train track of that stroke, especially in putting, right. okay? But I put the hands down and it always showed me if my hands are square. If I were to take a picture there, I know that my ideal posture is when my fingertips are about three inches past my toes. Okay, my armpit would fall in line with about right behind the toes of my feet and the balls of my feet. That's right here. But I memorize that visual. I see those two lines all the time, every single time I set up. And that right there has helped me memorize where I should be and helped me check myself. But the biggest thing is connection from the ground up. When it starts in the appropriate spot, it's going to be where it needs to be. I want that weight arriving in the heel at the same time I, my body's done turning, at the same time my arms and hands are done swinging the Hideki Matsuyama drill that Butch had Tiger do for so long that you had me do. Well, the thing about that drill, if you're not connected from the ground up, you're gonna look down at that golf ball from a frozen position at the top and go, there is no, no way. way I can hit this golf ball. Right, right. I've gotten to a point where I almost hit it farther yeah. doing that drill than not. Yeah. And the reason being is because I'm understanding what Todd's teaching here. I'm understanding that connection starts with this setup. This presets everything. We're gonna talk in a second about how the face on view can help you make a better turn. And I, have, we have, we have, I know you have some great things there. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about that loading versus spinning. Yeah. And we'll talk about that and how the setup promotes that. But right now, it's important. We have the grip. We have how to get the face down and aim. We have a process on how to help you do that. The next thing is, as he said, posture and how he's getting into the golf shot. I love what Todd said. And here's the big thing. If this line's here and then you tilt down to the ground, even if you're too close, you leave your upper body where it is and then just find the balls of your feet there. Okay, that's the nice thing about this. It doesn't matter if you step too, you know, too close or whatnot. People go, well, how do I know exactly how to step in? No, you, you don't. Just, just get over it. Get the club down to the golf ball. There's me. I'm just finding where the balls of my feet should be. And I just feel, for me, the majority of my weight would be on this side of the alignment rod. And I do like my students putting an alignment rod down on the ground, defining yeah, where the, the middle of their yeah. feet is and giving themselves a little bit of understanding about where the majority of that is. At Forzac Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, easy-to-understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.